Oh, holy crap. Okay. Look at that. Hello everyone, my name's Adam Ripples Vox, and I've had a surprisingly high number of requests for me to check out this new web browser called Vivaldi. It is a new web browser that just came out that seems to be focusing on being completely customizable. Uh, if I go back and pull up the page it downloaded from, I kind of lost it. Vivaldi web browser. It's an easy install, just like any web browser. It says a web browser for our friends. Modern classic, you can learn more. Customize everything, make the web yours, quick commands, and you can do lots of stuff. Stackable, tileable, tabs, write notes on the go. Kind of trying to be modern. Adaptive interface, spatial navigation, web panels, powerful bookmarks. And I've had numerous requests to review it. So I'm going to get to that after I set it up. And so I wanted to do my initial impressions and setup here since it does have a few steps to get started. And then I will spend some time with it. I won't be making it my main browser in general. Like, there's probably nothing this browser can do other than loading web pages, like, literally a millisecond after I click them, which isn't going to happen, to make me switch from Chrome simply because my entire work environment is deeply, deeply embedded in the Google ecosystem, and there's literally nothing I can do to change that. But I can take a look and maybe use it as an alternate browser. So you have a few themes here just for the top bar. Red and white, white and red, white and gray. Red and black, MKBHD edition, red and black, tech source edition, I guess, and black and gray. I think I'm liking the black and gray contrast a little bit better here on my screen. Next, tab bar position. This is kind of neat. All right, so you have a sidebar. You can keep everything on the side. That does sacrifice you some screen real estate for where your tabs actually are. That gives you a very interesting preview of things. I kind of like that. You can do the same thing on the right. Since I'm... I prefer it on the left. How about on the bottom? Bottom is pretty unique. I think overall I might prefer the bottom, but I'm going to roll with the left sidebar. We'll see if I can get used to that. Start page backgrounds. We're going to change the background of our start page with some of these abstract stuff or cliche wallpapers. Eh, I'll go with something blurred out here. And then dark doesn't hurt my eyes. Okay. Start browsing. And that's it. I click. It has a speed dial, kind of like Opera. I'll go ahead and click Twitter. Go to Twitter.com. We'll log into Twitter here. I'm going to add it as a bookmark using this. Nope, that's a new tab. There was a bookmark option. If I right-click the tab, I can bookmark tab or bookmark all open pages, just kind of like Chrome. A bookmark tab. That went somewhere, I suppose. You have a bookmarks button, so we can keep the whole bookmarks tab open if you want. And that's especially useful for these new you know, higher resolution displays, especially if you have an ultra wide, having that sidebar there, you know, as wide as you can make it still isn't going to cost you anything because you have all that screen real estate. And the si the same is kind of he true here on, uh, on my 4k monitor. Here we have Markiplier shaking hands with a dog. All right. We have downloads button. These are very tiny. I wish I could customize that. And I know that's not going to be an option. They're going to want me to do that in windows scaling, but I'm not using windows scaling. So we have Different web pa panels at first here. We've got bookmarks, downloads, and notes. And I can just start writing a note. This is a test note. Plus. All right. That's interesting. Then we can add more web panels. Oh, you can add web panels for specific websites. Okay, so what if I put in a web panel for lifehacker.com? Oh, so I can set up an entire web panel for an entire website. So if you have, like, like the default there was, since I had Twitter up for Twitter, if you, if you wanted to load your, like, Twitter notifications feed, actually, let me, let me actually log in here. I didn't want to do it, uh, but let me log in here, and we'll set that up. Here you have the typical save your password notification. That's all right. Looks just like Chrome. I wonder if that's an issue. All right, so if I want my Twitter notifications feed to to the web panel. So if I add a new web panel and make it this page, then if I go to lifehacker or not, lifehacker.com. All right, how's it gonna, Twitter saying notifications does not exist. All right, let's, uh, I guess let's remove web panel and try again. So we've got lifehacker open here on the main tab. I'm gonna open a new tab. 
Go back to Twitter. That's weird that it didn't work the first time. Notifications. Okay. Twitter.com slash I slash notifications. New web panel. Does not want to seem to load it. Is that because I'm not logged in on the web panel? Oh, holy crap. Okay. Look at that. That is loading the mobile version. So you can tell it to go to Twitter and then just load up the connect like you would on the... That looks like the Android app. That... that okay, that's, that's really, really freaking cool. So then I go back to Lifehacker on the main one. Keep scrolling through. Let's check out this week's top downloads. And then you have a raw feed of your mobile version of the Twitter feed here. I don't like that as much, but it's still really cool that you do it. And then if you right click it, you can say show desktop version. Doesn't exactly work as well, but basically same thing. All right, that's pretty cool. Oh, you do have web page scaling as a scroll bar down here. Whew. All right, I, I, I like that quite a bit. I use that since I'm on 4K with no window scaling. You can toggle images off. No images. Huh. Okay. If you want like quick loading without images here. Page tiling. You can tile multiple pages. So control click, click the tabs and then tile them. You have a different. <laughs> you can just like, wow. All within one window. This is all within one window instead of like, you know, having to manage multiple windows within windows. Windows within Windows, that's pretty cool. And then you have page actions over here. Content blocker, CSS debugger, filter black and white, filter gray, wait, what, really? Yeah, you can black and white or grayscale websites? God damn. And so you got a bunch of filters. I guess that's good for taking screenshots. You can transform the website to 3D. Don't know what that's gonna do, all right. Lots of stuff, reset button that's next to the scroll bar. It tells you how much the web page loaded, like in terms of data. So, 16.8 megabytes. You've got a search box. By default, it's set to Bing here. I do not appreciate that. How do I change that? Uh, somewhere in these settings, probably... Your file and stuff menus are kind of hidden in here. Not a huge fan of that, but that's okay. You got your typical view options. Uh, tools, settings, bookmarks, history, extensions, plugins. So there is history, or there is extensions and plugins, so that might work with something. Set it as default. Tell it what you want to open, so you can just reopen this whole session all at once, which is what I'm going to leave it to do. Use native window. We're going to give that a try in a second. Uh, you got start page options. All right, so you have a ton of fucking options here. I'm not going to take a full look at it. Network options, so that's proxies, web page, smooth scrolling, character encoding, you can customize the fonts that it loads, download location. You always need to check those options. Alright, search. We're going to enable the search bar. We're going to make Google the default, of course. We're going to remove Bing, <laughs> DuckDuckGo, and Yahoo. There we go. Okay. We got Quick commands, address bar settings. All right, so let's go to use native window. Close that, and then we're going to close Vivaldi and reopen Vivaldi. I don't know what that's going to do. Okay, I... At the moment, they're not making... Oh, whoops, I just minimized all of my other windows. That was genius. <laughs> um... So what this did was it ran it as a native Windows 10 app, kind of like Windows 8 apps used to do. And this would probably be better on Linux, where like there's more integration, or if they move some of the menu bar stuff at the moment, because this actually made the window even bigger. Like, look at the title bar now. Before, the close icons were on the same level as this Vivaldi button. Now the Vivaldi button's lower. This title bar doesn't even have a title, it just has the close, minimize, maximize. And then if we go back to settings, and set it as not a native window or a universal windows app. Reopen it here. It's actually smaller because the close, maximize, minimize button is on the same bar as the settings. So could be cool, but isn't cool. Then you have a full screen option which cuts off the sidebar, but you still have as much tiling as you want, which is still pretty cool. Then F11 to exit that. 
All right, so this is a really cool freaking browser. It's going to take me a little while to dig into all of it. I'm going to probably spend some time customizing it up and doing some cool stuff with it. It is loading Chromium extensions. So it just works with... Okay. So remember what I said at the start of the video about how this isn't going to replace Chrome for me? By the time I do the review, it may very well do that. It's actually loading... Chrome. It, it, it's a Chromium-based browser, so it's actually loading all of my Google stuff. So if I sign in to my Google account... Okay, I thought Chrome... or my Google login would actually let me import my previously installed extensions from Chrome, but if I pull Chrome up here, then I can just add the extensions that I used. So that's actually really cool. So if I untile the windows and I hide the web panel, then I just resize here. Here, I, this is why dealing with, you know, n multiple windows isn't maybe ideal. Then I can just go disable HTML autoplay, copy it over, and do the same for all of these, and that will be my Chrome setup. So like I said, I'm going to spend some time working with it, going to spend probably a week or so with it, and get back to you guys. But first impressions, I am very well blown away by this browser. I my, my, my biggest issue was my Google integration, which still isn't fully going to be there. Like, nothing's going to sync over as far as I can tell. Like, there is no syncing. If I pull the website back up, which I had somewhere over here. There we go. Um, I, I don't know features. I don't, I don't see anything about syncing up with Google Chrome, which you would think if they're going to make it Chromium-based, they would at least give you the option to do. I don't see anything like that. So I, I'll do some digging and see if that's possible. So there's an issue with me of not syncing all of my data across because that makes my life infinitely more difficult to manually input bookmarks and all that stuff. I use Password Manager for my passwords, though. But in theory, as long as all of my extensions work, like TubeBuddy, and things like that, as long as they work and actually, you know, function properly on here, this very well could replace my Chrome installation. So I am putting my foot back into my mouth. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, including my full review of this badass little browser here. And otherwise, my name's been Adam Reeples Vox, and I will catch you in the future video. Wow. That's, that's all I really have to say is wow. Huh.